There's something else I would really like to talk about as long as we're on the topic of forgiveness. Okay. I was wondering if we could talk about Hopoponopono. Okay. Um, because for me in my 40 some years on this planet, the most transformational, if I had to say like one thing, like this has been the thing. A practice. A practice mm-hmm. that has really served me in my life. It's what you and Tony um, have taught in the last maybe 10 years of, mm-hmm. of seminars and things. And that's this ancient Hawaiian practice called Hopoponopono. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would love to go there with you. Okay. I want me to set, let me set a little context for those of you who have not heard about it. I have this little book here. There's many books about Hopoponopono. Yes. Um, this one was the smallest one on my shelf, and that's why I grabbed it. But I think that it does uh, it does a great service. I think Billy Beck got us these he books. Did. He did. Billy loves to, Tony's trainer often comes over and brings us poignant little books, and this happens to be one of them. This one's by Ulrich Dupree. It actually mentions Tony's name in here, by the way. Mm. I think that's why Billy brought it over. Anyway. Hopoponopono is the Hawaiian ritual of forgiveness. It proceeds from an understanding of the unity of everything in the world, which is true, even though we feel ourselves to be separate. Because of this unity or oneness, Mm. nothing can happen in our world without creating a resonance in the observer. It follows then that we can only influence problems in the external, external world if we heal the corresponding inner resonance. Okay, to accomplish this, Hopoponopono relies on four magic sentences. I am sorry, please forgive me, I love you, thank you. That is the gist of mm. Hopoponopono. And so in Hawaiian, I have this one note on this page here, ho'o, so it's H-O apostrophe O means to make, and then pono means right or correct. So mm. it means to make right, right. Mm. to correct. <laughs> and it's just the most beautiful thing. I've seen you do it in... Um, we do it in our own life. Oh, all the time. Yeah. Talk to us about Hopoponopono. Okay. Well, once again, uh, for those of you who are listening, this is a tool. It's a practice. Uh, and we all find our way. And these are all tools that assist with mental well-being, with mental health. Um, it's certainly been mm. my experience. Um, the Hopoono, there's uh, inquiry, EMDR, tapping you had mentioned about individuals you know uh that have certain you know traumas or things to heal uh and this is one of those really uh remarkable tools and uh or practice i suppose is more accurate uh every night uh you know at the end of our night when we put our daughter to bed (laughs) uh there's actually a little song that we sing Um, and that includes the statements and the statements aren't personal. It's not, I'm sorry because, or I'm sorry I did this. It's a clearing of space. Uh, you can intend, say, for example, your family as a unit and I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And you, you, I mean, you can just say it, you can say it in different tones of voice, you can say it quietly inside your mind. It, you know, um, you can say it for a country. You can say it for your child. If, say, if, uh, for example, if Tony and I were having a conversation, and if I felt like, gosh, I wasn't my best self, and maybe he jumped on a call right away, I, if I, I'll, I'll just, I'll mm-hmm. say it just to clear the energy, and then I'll go and say, you yeah. know, afterwards, honey, do you know what? I wasn't my best self in that moment to actually clear. But it's a way to come back to center, to come back to zero point. It clears Mm -hmm. uh, what I call bound energy, but it clears uh, resistance or uh, it doesn't, it's not even specific. That's the power of it. Uh, and you know, I, I think I've mentioned this before when I'm, after I get out of the shower, I'll do like dry brushing and so forth. And while I'm doing my dry brushing, I'll say, uh, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And I'll just do it. Well, cause it's, you know, it's not necessarily specific, but you know, we've all done, I've done unconscious things to my body, to this body, this being, to our human, you know, we can all be unconscious. And so it's clearing energy. It's clearing space. Um, and it's kind and it's benevolent and it's loving. And, uh, the gentleman, Dr. H- I think it's Lou or Hugh, yes. yep. uh, he worked in an institution and he had the most remarkable, Dr. Hugh Lin, yes, he in the eighties and nineties. And, uh, I, I think he actually worked in a prison. Right. Um, and, uh, the results that he was having, and he didn't even necessarily tell people that he was doing it. Someone asked him to work in this mm-hmm. prison with psychologically 
mentally ill, we would say today, mm -hmm. um, prisoners. Yes. And he went through their files. Mm -hmm. This was in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And he went through their files and reading the story of their life, mm -hmm. their origin story, not just, he never even visited with the, uh, the prisoners in many cases. Yes. He just read their files and he would say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. He would say that hundreds of times yes. pouring over. And so, so to Sage's point, like it could be personal. You can mm -hmm. offer that. Let me finish the story. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Len, yes. these, I mean, folks were just, it was, it was downright miraculous mm -hmm. by all accounts of everyone who worked at this prison and how was this happening? And they were short staffed and nothing new was really going on. And this guy's not even seeing them. Mm -hmm. How could this be? And it's that it changes the resonance. And I understand that resonance and vibrations and the energy we put out yes. is a little airy fairy for a lot of folks out there. But if you're listening this far, you're one of us <laughs> and we can offer these words to folks. So you mentioned a few things and I just want to clarify okay. when you, when Sage said, you know, it's not personal. You can offer it to a country. Mm -hmm. I'm sure many of you, this is a common, this is a common scenario these days. Unfortunately, you flip on the news and it's your, your watch, you know, we could be sitting there at the dinner table and the news footage is like mm -hmm. the unimaginable mm -hmm. in other parts of the world. And, you know, just the destruction and the loss of innocent life and children. And it's just like, Right. And so you sit there and for me too, it's like, what can I do about mm. this? What do I do? And if I don't do anything, what does that say about me? It's like, this is something that actually you can do. Sage said it clears. What does that mean? It's like in the moment you can get so present and just be with that situation that we see mm -hmm. and offer like, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. And for any part in this whole humanness mm -hmm. that I have, a, I'm not in that war. I'm in this war. Mm. Yes, we're in, we're in this. Mm. And so I feel like also like when you said there's not sides, can't we see how it's so easy to divide and conquer us mm -hmm. in a million different ways? Mm -hmm. And then when you read something like like the work of Dr. Len yes. and you it sinks into your heart, like, and at the end of the day, we are all human beings mm -hmm. on this rock in eternity. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should work together. Hopoponopono, I think, is like just the most beautiful, simple children can do it. Tell, tell them what you sing each night to our daughter. Well, let's sing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a simple little ditty. Uh, you can fast forward if you prefer. Uh, Hopoponopono. Ho pono 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 ho po pono pono ho pono 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 ho po pono pono ho pono 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 I'm so sorry I love you please forgive me and thank you I'm so sorry I love you, please forgive me and thank you. Uh, we've sang that since our daughter was in the womb and we'll hear her on the crib cam singing. <laughs> she Papa sings oh no. it. You guys, if you've uh, never heard a two-year-old sing that song. <laughs> it's really, it's just, it's, it's a practice. You know, these are all tools. We have options out there. We can medicate ourselves. We can distract ourselves. We can entertain ourselves. And by the way, we've all done every every perspective. We can drink ourselves numb to try and escape the pain. And uh, you wake up on the other side, and there it is again, mm. knocking right, you know, at us. Uh, these are ways of um, neutralizing some of the confused uh, confusion, or you could look at it as a way of coming back into alignment, mm. a way of coming home. Uh, and try it. I try love it. These are all things uh, we're not here to share, to tell what anybody to believe or to do. Uh, these are just things that you can simply experience and try it on. If it serves beautiful and if it doesn't, that's okay too. And if you hear Sage say like, how is this a, a mental health tool, this little song that mm. a two-year-old can sing? It's, I will speak from my own experience of like moments of, anxiety, mm -hmm. guilt, shame, 
darkness, mm. human darkness, mm. those caves that we crawl ourselves into. And I, I think I speak for everyone. Again, mm. some stay in those caves longer than others, mm. but in times when I'm like, I don't know how to get out of this, when I'm feeling guilt, mm -hmm. when I'm feeling in the past, um, when I was say drinking or, or mm -hmm. before I've made changes in my life, if you've ever woke up on the other side of a big night and felt that guilt and shame, mm -hmm. what can you do in that moment? I wish I knew about this mm -hmm. when you're laying there and just in your own like self-loathing. And, and I wish that I knew like, you can say so to the people that won't answer the other, won't answer your phone call anymore. Yes. How do you reach them? Mm -hmm. To the folks that, you know, you can't find on Facebook, mm -hmm. distant past, doesn't matter to yourself. Mm. You can offer these. And I like how you said neutralizing because mm -hmm. it does, I, I hadn't thought of it that way before, but it has almost like a chemical reactivity to it. It's like when you're hooked and you're angry and you're in that like face melting acid of the feeling of those, of those lower Face Lower. melting acid. That's an awesome. That's how it feels like. <laughs> Isn't that what it feels like? And then you said it neutralizes. And then yes. like if you have wronged someone in any way and it's on your conscience and your little Jiminy Cricket is like, shouldn't have done that, hmm. dummy. <laughs> how could you do that again? Hmm. It's like for me, even, even at this stage of my life, it's still like, okay, if I can't reach this person right now, I can sit here and get present and offer like, mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm so sorry. I see, I see what I just did there. I, I really never want to do that again. And please forgive me and know that I love you so much. And thank you so much for just hearing me right now. Like mm. I can't explain that if you give, if you give that practice your heart, it has a neutralization mm -hmm. and a chemical reaction mm -hmm. to neutralize the face melting acid <laughs> and actually rip you out of that hole that we can get ourselves into of, of human darkness, mm. of depression, all of these, all of these things that are top of mind in, in the conversation. Mm. What are some other remedies besides drug it? It's like a child could do this. Yes. It's basic fundamentals. This is what the human heart is capable of mm. if we come back home. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a way back home. It's a journey home for us all back to oneself. And that really is uh, back to our heart because it's, it's love that has a vaster intelligence uh, than intellect alone. Our heart has a vaster understanding or um, capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really tapping into that. That's beautiful. Can I offer you this one book um, suggests steps, six steps to Ho'oponopono's Pono success. And I've actually, of all the times you guys have been teaching this for like a decade, years, mm -hmm. but I've actually never heard these six steps. I think they're beautiful. Let me offer them to you. Pardon me. Okay. Step one is to join with the original source, mm -hmm. Akua in Hawaiian, the being of light and the ancestors, God, spirit, the creator, the universe, however that resonates with you. Number two, to contemplate and accept whatever is presenting as the problem, the challenge. Number three, to take 100% responsibility for the existence of that challenge in your life. Number four, to be ready, following forgiveness, to handle things differently. Number five, to mutually pardon and forgive. And number six, to give thanks and offer a closing prayer. And I love those. That's, that's an addition that I had never heard. What do mm -hmm. you think? I know it feels utterly accurate. And there's a, a universality in all these wonderful practices and tools. And uh, we're excited for you to try this on yes. and experience for your own life and family. Um, Talk about, too, how you said you'll offer it. I love that you do it while you're dry brushing, you yes. hippie. Um, <laughs> but to our bodies, um, our bodies sure sure can take, uh, can bear the brunt of, of this human existence, this little skin suit that we're in. The things that we choose to do to our bodies, ingest, mm -hmm. put our bodies through, um, and whatever that, again, makes you think of, it can be an individual thing. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of, again, like unhealthy choices, permanent choices, um, other interrelational choices of, of all of those things. And again, if, the, if you're someone that's like, guilt and shame come up for you, try doing this to yourself. Mm. It's profound. Mm -hmm. Can you, how do you use that in a, in a way of, 
uh, letting yourself off the hook for, you talked in the past about different versions of yourself. Yes. And I love the idea of that. Uh, I can look back, uh, gosh, a year ago, five years ago, uh, 10 years ago, and I have compassion for her. I have love for her. And, you know, I see myself and it's like, gosh, I, I would choose differently today. <laughs> I would uh, navigate, I navigate my life differently because, but it was the unconscious that created the conscious. Like, you know, we, you can't have one without the other. I think right. we fall asleep so that we have the power to wake up. Because our life plays out over time. Mm. Like we are in space and time. Well, gosh, I think that's the power and the gift of this human experience is it's constant iteration and evolution and uh, and it's not just the beautiful that has caused, that causes that evolution. It's actually pain, mm -hmm. you know, the, and, and I think the gift of pain, uh, is it's humbling, you know, it's, it's, it's humbling. Like for me, it's like, man, those tattoos I got when I was 18 uh -huh. or yes. like, yes. oh, that relationship situation. I really wish I handled differently. And I mm. would absolutely now from this place, but you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we can all, I'll look in my closet and think, what on God's green earth was I thinking? <laughs> uh, I'll look at photos of myself and, and, and really think I look rather absurd uh, or whatever. If you said something, done something, we, we've, you know, we've all been there. We've mm -hmm. all been there. And it's, uh, I think that's the power and the gift of the human spirit is evolution. Mm -hmm. That's it. Evolution. Evolution. Um, you know, I, preparing for this, uh, I was considering two things. Number one, uh, why don't we forgive? Um, yesterday, I was just really reflecting. I was asking myself, okay, when I haven't forgiven, why didn't I forgive? Uh, or where, uh, you know, where did that energy come from? Or why wasn't I letting go? Uh, and so I came up with a list and, and uh, I'll share them and see if you find them relatable. We don't forgive uh, when we blame others for our own misery. We don't forgive when we demonize another human being. We don't forgive when we have unrealistic expectations of another. Uh, we don't forgive when we're addicted to the pain of the past or the story rather than the freedom of this moment. We don't forgive when we keep telling the same old story again and again. If you ever notice when you're not forgiving and you know you believe this person wronged you and innocently we trouble talk and keep, you know, that narrative going by sharing with our sisters or sharing with our friends or can you believe it like he or she did this thing or said this thing. So ego mind, fear mind is is fueling itself and building an architecture around the original belief or the original thought. Uh, we don't forgive when we value being right over being connected. Mm, uh, we don't forgive when we believe they don't deserve to be forgiven. They don't deserve to be forgiven. Just check in and see if you can connect to any of these, if they're relatable. We don't forgive when we numb or distract ourselves from our uh, suffering. And, uh, and I, I, you know, just re self-reflecting and looking at, at my own life of times when I felt that closure, that resistance or that holding on. And I recognized God and that, gosh, in that place of righteousness, you know, in that place of um, uh, the lacking the receptivity or the willingness. And ironically, there's something so powerful in admission of, you know, hey, I, I, I wasn't my best self in that, in that moment and I'm sorry. Uh, it's humbling. Mm -hmm. It's humbling. We, I think that's the gift and the power of any disconnect or disconnect from ourself or um, whatever life offers us. The pain of that, the humiliation is uh, a path to humbleness. Yes. <laughs> and yes. from that place, uh, you know, there's more receptivity, more flexibility to be open and reflective to see oneself yes. and therefore just tidied up in the moment. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are listening and saying, okay, my, you know, I, I, my parent has passed or, you know, I, I did this horrible thing and uh, it was so many years ago and I don't know how to, you know what I mean? I can't go and say sorry. I don't know that we always necessarily need to, once again, Hohopa Ono is a way of clearing the space. Uh, so another way of clearing if somebody has passed 
or another way of, of clearing or forgiving or, or, or if you feel that you're not able to reach out to an individual, the spirit in me connects to the spirit in you. I release you. I forgive you. I bless you. Thank you. And then you can picture them in a golden light or a violet colored light. By the way, you don't have to do any of this. This is just a suggestion. And then drop that image and just sit maybe for a few minutes of meditation. You open up to source, to the source of your being, to the source of our life, to the source that beats our hearts and offer it up to that source. Because when we don't know what to do in our own human mind, remember that the power of our heart, the power of this divine intelligence that has created this exact moment, never mind this conversation that we're having together today, uh, offer it to that space. And uh, I think it's, and you know, when there is that willingness, when uh, we're humble enough to know that, hey, this human part of me doesn't have all the answers, uh, miracles happen in that space. And, and that's just really beautiful and humbling. Whoa, whoa, that <laughs> is a gorgeous gift. I hope that people rewind that part and, and hear that again. It, it's like, I read in, I think it was like a Florence Scovel Shin book once, and she uses the language, I release you to your greatest good. Yes. And so it's different. Feel the difference of like, I forgive you mm. and, and the mm -hmm. inferiority, superiority that that has. And, and again, there's a place for, there's a place for everything, I'm, I'm sure. Yes. However, the different resonance of, I, I release you to your greatest good. I release you to your greatest good now. Mm. There's mm -hmm. like a lightness to that, there is. that that offers us and a spaciousness. Mm -hmm. I love the way that you language that. That's mm -hmm. you, you wrote that. Yes. I love that, it's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs>